sun's shining. Great day to go check out the uh, the Tulip Festival, which is underway all month long. And we do have Cindy Verge with us from the Skagit Valley Tulip Festival. Good morning. Liz. Good morning, Cindy. You have brought a special guest with you today. I have. I've brought with me today Eric Breen, and Eric runs the Tulip M Museum in Amsterdam. And he's also the representative for the 2012 summit in Antwerp and Venlo. It's in Antwerp and Venlo. Antwerp is a city in Belgium and Venlo is a city in Holland. And they have a cooperation for the Tulip Summit in 2012. And it will take place in October. And it's out of season, but we will have tulips then. And I understand that uh, at the, the 2012 summit, there'll be a lot of, fo of focus on the bulb. Yes, there will be a lot of focus on the bulbs. Uh, there will be a uh, bulb planting uh, theme there. They will be planting bulbs to show people and to teach people again that the fall is for planting, because a lot of people have forgotten about it. And nothing because you can always go buy tulips, right? Yeah, you can. Al of course, you can always buy tulips on pots or as a cut flower, but to plant them yourself and do that with your children is uh, very educative. And uh, I think it's also good for people to, you know, be back in the garden. It's good for your yin and yang, they say. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I, I love tulips. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't be director of the festival. But uh, I, I also have deer and squirrels that like to go through my yard on a regular basis. So I don't raise tulips myself, but I put a lot of other plants in. Okay, well, daffodils are nice as well, of course. Uh, the daffodils were great. They're not eaten by, by deer, but uh, okay. the deer are a problem. Uh, yeah. Here I know about it, but if you have a good water hose, you scare them away. <laughs> <laughs> They're sneaky too because I think I've got it all t taken care of and then they'll nibble on my rose bushes. Yeah. Well, I can imagine they like tulip because uh, tulip is a flower uh, and I think there's maybe an orchid but there's no other flower in the world that comes in so many colors and such a big variations like tulip, uh, parrot tulips, double tulips, single uh, tulips, lily flowering tulips. There's all kinds of, of tulips and even there's now a new group of tulips called the crown tulips with varieties like picture and yellow crown and Libra star and so what what makes the crown tulip different uh, the crown tulip uh, the shape of the flower it's it's a bit, bit curved and it looks like a crown ah okay so have you been enjoying the summit I've been enjoying it very much and uh, since I'm a, also a bulb grower in Holland uh, it's my first time I've seen the bulb fields here in Washington and uh, it feels like uh, being at home uh, except we don't have red barns in Holland n no red barns we got windmills uh, and no volcanoes we got no volcanoes but we do get ashes from Iceland now that's what I understand there was a huge eruption was it late last night or early this morning yeah um, so and, uh, is that going to impact you being able to get home? I probably have to stay here for a while. Oh well, gosh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then today where we you get to see the inside operation at Washington Bulb Company. Had you visited them before? No, I have not uh, seen their operation before. I did see some of their fields uh, yesterday uh -huh. from the roadside, but I have not been at their operation and it's it's a huge operation. They do a lot of tulips, they do a lot of uh, cut flower tulips in the winter time. Actually, they do that year round and uh, I'm looking forward to see that. And uh, so tell us a little bit about what's at the Tulip Museum in Amsterdam. The Tulip Museum, it's uh, in the center of Amsterdam and it's right across the canal from the Anne Frank House, so it's ah, very easy okay. to find us. Uh, it's a museum in uh, one of those old pack houses. Um, it's a museum about the history of the tulip. Uh, we show it to the audience in five steps. The first step is the where you get to see the tulips in the wild. And where are those at? It's like countries like Kazakhstan, um, even into Switzerland you will find wild tulips, Italy, Crete, Greece, Turkey, Israel, Kyrgyzia, even uh, up in Japan there are wild tulips. Okay. And the second step is the, the, the tulips in the Istanbul time, all those uh, needle tulips. Then we show about uh, the tulip mania in the 17th century when, where people would trade tulips, those flamed uh, bizarre tulips for, for crazy prices. Wasn't it like as much as a house that they would trade a tulip bulb for? That happened one day and it was like, a, like a, it, it crashed, like, like Wall Street crashed. Uh -huh. People got too greedy. 
and uh, it collapsed completely and then and came back to their senses that they really yeah. they're beautiful but they're bulbs they're bulbs you know they're only bulbs and then the the, the fourth step is that we show the people uh, how bulb growers in the early days would work with bulbs and show the old tools and show the way they uh, they handled bulbs and then the fifth step we show and we have also got a little video about the, the industry of bulbs today but we also show uh, people new ways to use bulbs uh, in, in, in the combinations or in uh, what we call color blends. It's, uh, the oh. Tulip Museum is a joint operation with color blends. It's a, uh -huh. a bulb mail order business in uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. And we show people how to use tulips in, in new blends with colors that are matching or contrasting. Mm -hmm. So the tulip industry really is a worldwide industry. It really is, yes, mm -hmm. it really is. And it seems uh, that's one of the things that I've learned as we've done these summits is uh, everybody knows everyone in the tulip industry. We'll talk about a person in Australia and people in Holland know that person or people in England know that person. Oh yeah, and, all the tulipaholics, they know each other. Yes. It's an incurable disease. <laughs> I'd like to know what the, uh, if, if the uh, museum has a website? The, the museum does have a website. It's www.amsterdamtulipmuseum.com. Okay. I think I'm bringing it up right now. And then uh, we we have uh, today is the last day of the summit, and it'll end with a visit to the to light up uh, reservation tonight. And we're also got the Kwanis salmon barbecue that we're going to take people to. Uh, That's something I'm really looking forward to. The one of the because that was one of the never-ending questions is I've I've gone to different places is. People say, do you really have enough salmon that you can barbecue? And we said, yes, indeed we do. And uh, it's over an alder grill, and uh, all the money goes to charity, which makes it even better. They've, uh, the Kiwanis have uh, raised almost $2 million uh, since the inception of the Tulip Festival. And all of that money goes back into our communities here. So there's another good reason to, to be there. Yes, it is. All right, excellent. Well, I appreciate you guys coming in and Thank spending you, some time uh, get, keeping us up to date on what's going on, uh, not only with the uh, uh, with the World Tulip Summit, the Tulip Festival, but with the Tulip Museum. Yes. I've learned some new things today. And also, just to remind people, because we've been getting a lot of phone calls, it's Street Fair Weekend this weekend, mm -hmm. and there's over 100 juried arts and crafts vendors that'll be in downtown Mount Vernon on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Excellent. If you'd like more information on the Tulip Festival, you can go to tulipfestival.org, and what's the website for the World Tulip Summit? 2010 WorldTulipSummit.com. All right. Thanks for coming in. Do appreciate it. Thank you, Glenn.